In this video, I'll provide my experience as well as some tips for towing with a Tesla Model X. The topics I'll cover include what you get with your Model X and what you'll need to buy, installation and verification of the setup, driving and the efficiency impacts that I saw, uh, as well as disconnecting and storage of your equipment. Tesla continuously updates their owner's manual, so I recommend looking at that um, every time you tow just to see if they've made any changes. Uh, one thing to note right off the bat is how much the Tesla Model X can tow. Basically, if you're using the 19 or 20 inch wheels, you're gonna be able to tow up to about 5,000 pounds with a maximum of 500 pound tongue weight. However, if you're using the 22 inch wheels, that lowers to about 3,500 pounds of towing capacity and about 350 pounds of total tongue weight. All right, when you receive your Model X, you'll actually get this nice carrying case for the trailer hitch. It comes with a set of keys, it comes with your hitch. We'll show how to show, install that in just a minute. And then how it adap the adapter plugs in. Some things that you'll need to purchase. Uh, I recommend getting some of these hooks. Uh, this will drop the, the distance to your chains, make it a little bit easier to hook up your chains. Make sure that these are strong enough for what you're carrying. You also probably need an adapter. Uh, the Model X comes with a circle uh, trailer adapter that also includes the capability of using a trailer brake. Most U-Hauls are going to have this flat four pin, so you need an adapter. You can get those online for just a few dollars. Next, you'll need to get a ball hitch. Uh, it does not come with a ball hitch. You can't use a drop hitch, so one of these combination hitches is probably okay where there's a two inch drop, but also a three quarter inch raise, uh, depending on how you have the ball set on it. So um, most of them will be spun around. You'll have to reverse that. You can normally have that done at U-Haul uh, or where you're buying it, or um, you can just do it yourself if you have the proper tools. Next step is to take off the cover where the receiver goes, uh, and this can be a little bit hard to get to. Uh, I recommend setting the suspension to extra high. This gives you a few more inches to work with underneath the car. You pop these pins down in the center. Uh, once you pop the center piece down, then you can pull them out um, and make sure you store these in a safe place. I recommend the same case that the receiver sits in. Uh, next up, you just use a screwdriver to kind of pop the plastic piece down and then it pulls out. Uh, make sure you're pulling from the front and then uh, slide out from the back. Next is the cap for the receiver. Make sure you always put that cap back in. You can see there's grease there uh, and that needs to be kept clean. Next, insert your uh, adapter and you push it in until you can see the little lip will go over the cap and that kind of locks the adapter in place. This adapter is nice because it actually glows uh, once it receives power. Next up is the rings to kind of drop where the chains connect to. Now you can see how this makes it a lot easier to connect your, your chains up. Make sure those are tight. Okay, the first thing you need to do is take your key, pop this little plastic cover off, Go from the lock to unlock, pull, and rotate until it clicks and it holds in place. You take it, push it up nice and steady, it spins back, it's locked in place. Lock your key. You're ready to go. And then, of course, don't forget the make sure it's in test. Yep, looks like it's in. Next up is measuring your ball hitch off the ground. Right now, I'm set on high. It's about 18 inches to the top of the ball, or about 17 and a half to the center, um, which is okay. Uh, check your trailer and uh, the U-Haul trailer that you're using if you're using U-Haul. Uh, to determine what the best height is off the ground because that does impact how the trailer will pull. Here you see that the trailer is attached and the first thing is the latch itself. Some have a flip down latch, some are like this where you actually have a screw that you uh, rotate clockwise until it's tight. Here you can see the plug uh, is set up with a four pin adapter, the chains are attached with little rubber stoppers, the chains are crisscrossed and even twisted a little bit so that they don't drag on the ground. 
Once you've attached the trailer, check the dashboard for the trailer status light. If it's blue, you're good to go. You just need to check your trailer lights, make sure everything works okay. If it shows orange, it may be that it's detected and you have lights, uh, but maybe you're using LED lights, it's pulling less power, or you're carrying an accessory instead of an actual trailer. If it turns red, then you have something wrong and you need to look into that to make sure that uh, your lights are either working or reconnect things to make sure you don't have a prop, uh, an improper connection. And the last thing to note before you get driving is that autopilot features will act differently. Autopilot itself does not actually work. Traffic aware cruise control does, but it does change the, the following distance and your air suspension settings will not change automatically. However, you can adjust them manually. Next, I'm going to talk about driving and efficiency. And the easy one is driving. No matter what you're towing with Model X, because it's a big, heavy car, and because of the way the electric motors work, it's always going to be very stable, uh, almost to the point where it's a little deceiving. You need to make sure that you're careful with uh, giving enough space and driving at an appropriate speed. This trip was a great example of how to show the efficiencies uh, that you'll actually see. We had uh, some country roads, we had some highways of about 55 to 60 miles an hour, and then we had some interstate of about 65 miles an hour, which is important to note. You need to drive at a realistic speed for safety and efficiency. The trailer was about 1,240 pounds with 400 pounds of wood in it, so about 1,640 pounds. The weather was about 40 degrees, and we normally get 380 to 400 watt hours per mile. So this is about a 15 to 20 percent increase in power, so not too bad. Towing something that has the aerodynamics of a brick. When disconnecting the trailer, it's super important to have chocks on the downhill side of the wheels. You can see here that the U-Haul had specialized chocks that we used. Next, remove the lighting cable, and it's normally easier to remove the entire adapter. Make sure your cover is closed, and make sure you don't leave your adapter with U-Haul or whoever the trailer company is that you're using. You can then remove your chains. Now, make sure that you're straddling the hitch so that if this thing comes down, it does not come down on your toes. Pull the chains off, kind of flip them over on top, and you're ready to uh, remove the hitch itself. When you're lifting up on the hitch, be real careful, uh, again, about your toes, and uh, if the trailer potentially will move at all, be ready to get out of the way. If you have the chocks in the right place, the trailer shouldn't move at all. First thing you want to do, pop the cap off, put your key in, rotate it to unlock, pull it out, and twist, and support it because it's going to fall. And there you go. Next, make sure you've got your plastic cover and that it's clean. Pop it in place. Then you can remove your rings. Take the cover. Insert the back first. Then pop in the front. Don't forget your pins. Normally wrap the rings up in a paper towel. Keeps them from rattling around. And top of bag. Also cover the end of the receiver up. Right With the five seater, get an extra lower trunk. place for it and that's it I hope this helped feel free to add your comments about towing with a Tesla or other electric car thanks for watching